Welcome to You in HD, your identity in higher definition with Pastor Eric Miller. Join us in our journey of faith in God by taking an in-depth look into the Bible's authority and sufficiency to guide us in our Christian walk. Discover your identity in Jesus Christ today. How you doing, guys? Uh, I'm here to tell you, I want you guys, especially today, um, I have a heavy heart today. Guys, look after each other. All we have in this world as believers is each other. The things that divide us are all from Satan. Your religion, your denominations, your so-called spiritualism, your so-called um, your so-called belief structure. If it's not in the Bible, and I mean you know it as much as anybody else, you know all we have is each other. There is nobody else coming for us in this world. There's nobody else coming to defend us. There's nobody else coming to help us. The religion and theology and denominations and things that you're relying on, those very people that you think are your brothers and sisters will sell you down the road for their own life one day. You are not the same as them. If you are a believer in Christ and Christ is your savior, you are not one of them. You can cloak yourself in them if it makes you feel better. You can comfort yourself in old confessionals that don't do anything to you whatsoever. You can claim all the Lutheran, Calvinism, Baptist, Protestantism, Roman Catholicism. Say You can claim whatever you want. If you are truly a believer in Christ, I have met women and men who say they are witches and they are Christian. A young man that says, yeah, I believe in Satanism, but it's not like I can't be a Christian and live my life a certain way to where I can live on my own rules. I know atheists who pray and don't believe in God. It takes no energy. It takes nothing to say that you are a Christian. It takes no effort whatsoever to say that you are a Christian. Anybody can say it. Anybody can go to church and be unsaved. Anybody. It takes no effort to say that you are a Christian, but it will take everything in your body, your mind, your soul, and your spirit. It will take all that you have to claim hold of Christ. There is no room for anything else for you to hold on to. Let's go into the word of our Lord and Savior. And I like reading out of this book. You know what? This is such a deceptive book. It says self-help edition. You want to know what's funny about this, about what this book, what the self-help actually means? It actually just means the beginning. Listen, it's, it's hilarious because nothing in this book is about you. Look, it's helping you find your own thing. Look at that. It's basically telling you this is how you can help yourself by reading what they they already pre-designed some passages to read. That's as much as self-help that's in there. Because, you know, when you think about self-help, self-love, self-care, those are all things the world produces, the world preaches. God does not preach that. God preaches what? Reliance. Dependence. He says, you put everything on me and you leave nothing to yourself. You leave no room for you at all in your life. Listen to this out of, I'm sorry, Romans, Luke 9, 23. Y'all all know how much I love 9, 23. Let's read. And this, this is so, look, this, this, look at, who can read? Look at that. That is some small writing. Man, I can't read that. So I got to go to my Malcolm X glasses. So that way I can see. I got. Ooh, look, it's crooked. Look at that. There we go. Now we're in business. So Luke 9, 23. 
One of my favorite books is, if y'all know me, I love Luke. I can read Luke as many times, and, and I haven't actually finished it 100%, because every time I get up to the later end of the chapters, I have to go back into it. Listen to this. Verse 23. Then he said to them, Anyone who wants to follow me must put aside his own desires and conveniences and carry his cross with him every day and keep close to me. Whoever loses his life for my sake will save it, but whoever insists on keeping his life will lose it. And what profit is there in gaining the whole world when it means forfeiting oneself? Glory to God. Isn't that beautiful? Glory to to God. Those are the things that powers me through. When I when you listen to that passage, and God and, and Jesus is as clear and as concise as he can be, tells you flat out there you pick up your cross and you follow after me. You know what's on that cross? Your sins, the things that got you killed the things that got you condemned there is no room for your religion there's no room for your for, for where you've been and where you're going to there's no room for anything but what got you to christ no religion no denomination no personal theology no corporate theology no confessions creeds Denominations, orthodox, unorthodox, liberal, progressive, right-leaning, left-leaning. You got nothing. Nothing will fit on that cross but your sins. The sins that Christ has forgiven. And Christ said, you take that and you stick close to me and that's it. No room for anything else. The man that believes that he can carry something else other than his cross is a liar to himself and is the greatest fool you'll ever meet. Christ on the road to being crucified fell over, stumbled down, dropped his cross and Simon was tasked to help carry the cross just for a little while and then Jesus took it the rest of the way. You think a man and a woman has the capacity to carry the same cross that Christ and his weakened state when he dropped it. Do you really think that somebody has the strength to carry all that religion and belief system with them and carry their cross? That is the most delusional human being you will ever run into. Just as double-minded and as lost and frustrated with his life as anybody else. And if they feel, oh, I feel comfortable in this. I can be religious. I can have my religion. I can have my personal beliefs. And God will carry me. You have lost your mind. There is no room. No room for nothing else on that cross but your hands and the sins that Christ has forgiven. On that plaque on your cross will be what? Your name. On the sides and down the back of it. All the sins that Christ has forgiven. And it will be for all the world to see. It will be your testimony. Why are you carrying that stuff with you brother? Because this. Is what Christ has saved me from. There's no room. There's no room for anything else. But Christ. And him alone. There's no room for your personal life that you want to have. You want to be a fitness guru. You want to be the next YouTube sensation. You want to be the next car club. Whatever you got. There is no room for anything else in your life but your devotion and your desire to follow Christ. It takes everything you have 
The first commandment, love God with all you have. You have no room for anything else. Anything that anybody that convinces you, you can carry this and this and still be a Christian, listen to me close, are liars and con men and women. You don't even have room for yourself. That should give you some insight. What did Christ say? Deny yourself. Luke 9, 23. You don't even have room for you. So what can you carry that God says there's no room for? What could you possibly pick up and carry with your cross? Nothing. There is nothing else for you to carry. All you have strength for and you barely have strength to carry that cross. If not for Christ, Carrying that cross for you and with us. And let's go into more of the scripture. Let's not just stay there. Let's listen to what the Lord says through Paul in Galatians. Because you know we got to go to the Bible to stay there. It's a beautiful thing. Listen to this. Galatians chapter 6. This is helping one another. OK, this is very critical on helping each other as Christians. Very critical. Religion can't teach us this. Spirituality can't teach us this. Theology can't teach us this. Just the Bible teaches us this truth. And this is what we hang our hat on. Brethren, even if anyone is caught up in a trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of gentleness, each one looking to yourself so that you too will not be tempted. Listen to this. Bear one another's burdens and thereby fulfill the law of Christ. What's the law of Christ? Love one another. Embrace one another. Stand with one another. Love one another. Help as Christ dropped his cross after the beating he took. The beating that Christ took would have killed a normal man. He took a beating that should have killed him. And he lived. And still had the strength to carry that cross as far as he did. And when his physical body got weak, Simon was there. God, look at that, in the spirit of gentleness, God sent Simon to help carry the cross just a little bit. Not a long way, just a little bit. And here he is, Christ get underneath that cross, and Simon carrying that cross with him. Listen to this. For if anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he, deceive, he deceives himself. Think about that. If anyone thinks he's something when he is nothing, that's God telling you, when you think that you've arrived, you haven't, you haven't got there yet, Bubba. You ain't arrived yet. You still got some ways to go. Listen to this. He deceives himself. But each one must examine his own work and then he will have reason for boasting in regard to himself alone and not in regard to another. I helped this brother do all this other. No, you didn't. You helped carry some of his burdens for a little bit until he was able to pick up his load and carry it on. That boasting is, thank God I was there to help my brother carry it just a little bit of ways until he gathered himself enough strength to continue to carry his own load. How do we know that's true? How can I say that with all confidence? Verse 5, for each will bear his own load. We each will carry our own baggage. But we cannot forget to love our brothers and sisters in Christ because all we have in this world is each other. As long as people are clinging to religion, theologies, and their own spirituality, their own personal beliefs, they are not only, they're all not only deceiving themselves, but they will not be able to help you in your time of need. Because all the help they can give is fake, plastic, worthless religion. And it has no power. It has nothing to offer you but more slave chains. 
When a man of religion or a woman of spirituality or a, a, a man or woman of theology come to you to help you with your cross, all they're doing is putting handcuffs on you and adding more chains to a cross that is already heavy. They are not comforting. They're crushing. All we have in this world is each other. All we have is each other. Cling to Christ and Christ alone, and you will see things beyond your wildest dreams. You will feel what it is to be comforted by those in Christ Jesus. I love you very much. This message is simply, we have to stick together with each other because all we have in this world, things are going to be changing fast. Things are going to be coming very quickly against the Christian church and those in the church that we don't necessarily see them with our visible eyes, but the invisible church will be all that we have. One day soon, it'll be us in the Roman Colosseum when the lions are let loose and the only person that you're right and left will be brothers and sisters like me. Not the people that you think have your back. It'll be those that you least expect will hold your hand and look you in the face and say, man, we're going home to the Lord. Just hold on for a little bit longer. Just for a little while, as the Lord says in John 14. I love you very much. You matter to God more than you can imagine. Christ is the embodiment of how much you matter to God. And know that if nobody, if you don't think you matter to anybody else, if you don't have someone else that you that you can rely on in your corner that is not sucking you dry like a vampire, I got your back. I am not full of it. You can reach me 24-7. I will not turn my back on you. I will stand with you until the lions come get us. I can say that without any shaking or any doubt in my, I will stand with you. Faults and all, we'll go through it together. I love you very much. Stay strong. Stay fighting. Don't give up. And it's okay to hurt, but it's not okay to hurt by yourself. It's not okay. You got family. Use them. You got brothers and sisters in Christ. Use them. We are here waiting for you, willing to help you carry the burden for a little while until you get your strength underneath you to put your ground, your foot on that ground, put that cross on your back and get to marching. We are there for each other. Don't pass up that truth. Jesus said himself, you will know those who are mine because of how much they love each other. Love one another, brother. I love you too, brother. Y'all stay strong. Men, stay strong. I know it's tough. Men, stay strong. I know it's tough. But know that I'm with you and I'm going through it with you. And I am always, oh, I'm like 7-Eleven. I am always open. I'm always willing to listen and I'm always willing to fight with you and and gosh darn it I'll fight for you when you get in the beating I'll I'll be I'm the bully that beats the bullies I have become that guy Not on my watch Not on my watch you're not by yourself I love you stay strong brothers stay strong sisters stick to the word of the Lord and Jesus alone nothing else and you will finally be able to experience the peace and joy that Christ had even on the road of going to the crucifixion. He did all that for us and never did he waver. Never did he hesitate. John 10, he says, I, no man takes my life. I gladly lay it down and God has given me power to raise it back up. That's the Christ that we serve. So keep serving the king, brothers. And if you need backup, holler at your boy. I got you. You have just listened to You in HD, your identity in Jesus Christ with Pastor Eric Miller. This ministry is made possible by your thoughtful prayers and donations. Join us each week as we continue to explore our Christian identity in Jesus Christ. May God richly bless you. In Jesus' name.
Amen.